Mike was my mentor uh, when I was an Echo Fellow. You were my fellow, so I follow your career. <laughs> okay, so here's the good news. I'm from Washington, D.C., and this is the Value Summit. The bad news is I hate the traffic around the Capitol, and I do everything I can to avoid it. But the good news is I'm not talking about reimbursement today. I'm talking about change management. So the disclosures are that um, while I've been at the same institution for many years, I've seen an enormous amount of change and have had many different positions. So this is going to be taking Susan's talk, which is a little scary, but I think really exciting. I'm a glass half full person. And it's really exciting, but we as leaders within echocardiography, within our own institution, are going to need to help make it happen and help manage all that change. So we're going to talk a little bit about change management. I love this quote. I'm in favor of progress. It's just a change I don't like. Not in my own backyard. Don't do it to me, but let somebody else get that progress going. But it's got to be in our backyard. Um, and um, the first thing we need to do is recognize that we have ascended to um, where we are today for uh, a lot of good reasons. Um, we work hard. We're smart. We're dedicated. We have um, really dedicated our lives to becoming experts within a field. So when you're experts in the field, you're the person that everyone goes to for the answers, and you like giving the answers. It makes you feel good to give the answers. So all of that has allowed us to ascend to the positions that we have. All of that is what's going to make us terrible change leaders. Because we're at risk of failing because we don't need our own hard work, our own dedication, our own commitment. We need the commitment of the team because we can't do it by ourselves. And it's change. It's change in unpredictable ways. It's change that you haven't done before by definition. You're not an expert in it. You're going to have to figure it out. You don't have the answers. Oh my god, I don't have the answers. That's going to be a really uncomfortable thing. So until you embrace that you don't have the answers, you're not going to be a good change leader. There's a great book. Um, it's called The Three Box Solution. There was a Harvard Business Review article um, about it. And it talks about uh, the fact that um, I like to say, live in today, plan for tomorrow. Um, we all live as leaders in three boxes, managing the present, creating the future, and then as we move from the present to the future, we have to let go of some things, and we have to abandon the things of the past that don't apply or don't work anymore. That sounds pretty straightforward, right? So what do we do every day? We live in box one. And not only do we live in box one, we optimize box one. We get really, really good at how to do things today in a way that's more efficient, more effective, faster, whatever. So we're comfortable in box one. How are we as visionary thinkers, strategists? Some of us are very creative and very good at it. Some of us, it's not where we live, so it could be pretty uncomfortable. But what I'll tell you is the most uncomfortable thing, in fact, the thing that we'll resist is letting go of stuff. We don't want to let go of stuff. I, um, you caught my eye, Susan, as you're shaking your head, yes. How many times we sit in the ASC board of directors meeting and people have some great ideas and we're like, yeah, we should do that. But we don't want to take anything off the table. We just want to add more things to the table. To really move from box one to box three, we're going to need to take things off the table. So we, uh, th uh, the ASC uh, launched a leadership academy. Uh, we met um, with the, that first cohort of 14 people in the leadership academy on Saturday and we had a guest lecturer. Professor Pearson, Kathy Pearson from Wharton, um, and she talked about why good strategies fail. Unbelievable statistic, two-thirds of strategic, and strategic initiatives fail across all industries in the United States, two-thirds. And why do they fail? Mm -hmm. The most common reason is those guys and girls up in the corner office, more often guys, are coming up with strategies, but they don't understand how things really work. They're disconnected with the reality in the trenches on the floor. And we see this in medicine so often. Those folks in the corporate office, 
They have this great idea of what they're going to do. They're going to roll it out across the system, but they didn't involve the clinical team in making that decision. There's a, there's a, a whole area of organizational um, um, design, organizational um, development uh, called STAR, STAR, and it's STAR Lab is, is the way they do it. It's essentially socio-technical action-oriented um, 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 approach to things. And this came from like the 1920s. A bunch of engineers um, created a better, a better way to do mining, a new type of tool. And they gave it to the miners and they put it down in the mines and unbelievable accidents, explosions, um, hundreds of miners were killed. And they're like, that's crazy. They went back to the engineers that designed it and said, what happened? And they said, those darn miners, they don't know how to use the equipment. So one mining company said, okay, we're gonna take a day off. You're gonna train all the, these miners how to use the equipment and God darn it, they're gonna go use it because this is supposed to increase efficiency a hundredfold, tenfold. The other mining company said, hmm, something's wrong. Let's, let's get the miners together. Let's talk about what we expect this a piece of equipment to do, and let's talk about why it's not working. Well, you know what the results are. That first mine, they trained everyone. They found out exactly how to use it. They went back down. Dozens more miners got killed the first day. The other one, they, they said, here's what this is supposed to do. This is why we designed it this way. And they said, are you crazy? That's not going to work. Think about the hole in this piece of equipment. We're going to get killed. It's going to do this. Oh, well, how would you do it? And all of a sudden, they came up with a completely different design, highly productive. There is a disconnect between people making the decisions and those that know it. But why does that happen? Why is it that the people that have ascended to the corner office are making these decisions without the input of others. So are you getting the input of all the stakeholders, uh, up, down, and sideways? Um, other reasons, to, I'm gonna come back to the, the socio-technical uh, action planning, and then um, having a local, a local advocate, and then leadership. And this is, this is a failure of the corner office to have true leadership. Leadership recognizes that the boss, so if you're the director of the Ecolab, you're the boss there. If you're the um, CEO of the system, you're the boss for the system. Um, that it recognizes that the boss is not going to just do it themselves. They're going to need the team. That the boss does not know the answers. They don't know the answers. And that the new role of the boss is to lead the change of the team. And what does the team need? Well, they need support and optimism, reassurance. They need comfort through an uncomfortable time. They need encouragement to pitch in and speak up. I'll get to that. They, to help make these change. They, want to, they need to play an active role both in carrying out the change and making the change work. And that's very different from commandership. That's, this is leadership. Commandership is you give orders and you expect people to follow those orders. That's not going to lead you through change. Leadership is helping enlist the team, get the team to work together to achieve a goal. So what do you need to do if you're the leader? You need to accept that you don't have the answers, and you need to enlist, elicit um, help from the team to get the answers. So. Um, just also, as you recognize that the administration above you might not know that much about the Ecolab, you, if you're the director of the Ecolab, don't know all aspects about what happens within that Ecolab. So here's the test. Do you have a culture in which the truth could be heard? Do you have a culture in which bad news can easily be delivered? Bad news can easily be delivered to you. Do you appreciate it when somebody comes to you with bad news. Are you kidding, Neil? I don't like to hear bad news, but you should. Because if someone's coming to you with bad news, they're telling you about something that needs to be addressed, needs to be fixed, so that you could make it better. If you didn't hear the bad news, isn't that a lot worse? That things are happening that you don't even know about, so you don't even know they need to be fixed? Of course you want to hear the bad news. So have you developed a culture that allows for that to happen? 
What does that mean? You rewarded her. Boy, John, thanks for coming. I had no clue. What do you think we should do? Let other people know, hey, John was really helpful. Came forward, told me about this problem. You don't know the answers. We've been successful in our career because we know the answers. You don't know the answers during change. And it's dynamic. So by definition, change is going to change. It's going to be dynamic. It's not a plan. Therefore, successful change management must also have dyna dynamic design and dynamic decision making. Now, this is super, super, super uncomfortable for people like me. I like to make lists. I like to have a plan. I like to have a timeline. And I, God darn it, want to follow it. And if you're not following it, I get really, really, really annoyed. Uh-oh. We don't know the plan. We know what we want to accomplish. We're soliciting the input. We're going to do iterative steps. So sticking with the plan is very different from executing the change. Focus on the goal. Focus on enlisting the team. Make sure everyone knows the goal and you get everyone's input. And by the way, think about changes in the echo lab. Everyone's input is not just the doctors and the sonographers and the nurses. It's transport. It's the um, environmental services. It's everyone that touches that place. VUCA. VUCA is the new hot um, um, business term for many years. We live in a world of volatil volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. Boy, does that sound like fun. So, uh-oh, my advancer stopped. <laughs> this is... <laughs> This is a trick. <laughs> Redundancy. Having a backup plan is really important. <laughs> All right. So, um, so, um, so um, recognize there will be unknowns. And that's fine. That's an accepted part of change. You don't know what's going to happen. So different from the way we want to practice medicine. So different. So accept that there's going to be uncertainties. There's unknowns. So what are you going to do about those unknowns? You're going to manage them. You're going to track them. You're going to ask yourself, what don't we know here? You're going to look for trends. And then you're going to take actions. And they don't have to be big actions. They don't have to be a whole new plan. They're small in, um, in, um, iterative actions, small bets, small experimentations, and with that you'll get to your goal. How do you do this with the team? As a leader, you have to build trust. And um, one of the, uh, lots of, lots of definitions of leadership, tons. I like a very, very simple definition of leadership. It's the development of followership. Totally the opposite of commandership. Commandership, if you're a commander, you're behind the troops with a gun and say, march. Followership, you're walking and say, that's where we're going, and everyone just naturally is joining you. How do you build trust? And trust is the currency of leadership. You just do the right thing. You be honest. You be yourself. You care about the people. You listen. You learn. You let them know what's going on. Um, this is a, a little mo more um, uh, modern definition from Simon Sinek. This is from Twitter just a couple weeks ago, I think. Uh, ambition is refusing to quit on ourselves. Leadership is refusing to quit on others. I like it. I mentioned give and take, uh, Adam Grant's book. It's just about how givers and helping others actually uh, breed success. And in medicine, we are givers. We have chosen to care for others and give to others. But you could do the same thing in change. You could give to your team, okay, and give them what they need. Give them that environment. Recognize that you live in a world within a world. You help understand that world, and you make it so that for your team, you're able to give to them a sense of security, even in, an, in a time of turbulence. Now, I'm going to finish. This is a slide I used uh, this morning in a talk with the early career. I used it, um, I used it at my Edler lecture when we talked about innovation and change. And uh, it's one of my favorites, Peter Drucker, the best way to predict the future is to create it. God done it, we're going to do it, let's just do it ourselves. Except that's actually wrong for change management.
because it's not doing it yourself. It's doing it with the team and being a leader and developing followership. And part of that, and the biggest part of that, isn't the doing, it's the feeling. And this is super hard for a lot of us, especially those J30s on the Myers-Briggs that like to just do. So it's much more about how the team feels and um, making sure you have good communication and good strategic vision. So with that, thank you. Good luck with your change.